6K recording, phase detection autofocus, a built-in cooling fan. It's the Lumix S5 Mark II. This is not a drill, and this is also not it. This is my original S5 as a placeholder. I'm recording on the Mark II right now. So this is what it looks like. Hi there, my name is Aiden Robbins. I'm a filmmaker and YouTuber. And a little over two years ago, I made a video here on Adorama TV for the launch of the original Lumix S5. So if you're experiencing a bit of deja vu right now, that might be why. I was blown away by the camera and it actually ended up being my go-to camera for pretty much all of my work over the past two years. So naturally, I was incredibly excited to see what new features the Mark II would offer. First morning with the S5 Mark II here. It is a chilly one. And before we jump in, I just wanna clarify, this is not an in-depth review of every single feature, but rather an overview of key changes and their use in the field. That being said, let's start on the outside and work our way in. The Mark II is slightly larger than the original S5, with a few features nudged around a little bit, but for the most part, it looks like the original S5. They've swapped out the HDMI D port for a beefier HDMI A port and also added a cooling fan, which is kind of wild considering the camera hasn't really gotten larger. That cooling fan will help to make sure it doesn't overheat when you're using more intense specs, which we'll talk a bit more about in a moment. Probably the most noteworthy feature is that the S5 Mark II has phase detection autofocus. Autofocus was the S5's kryptonite and they fixed it. Phase detection autofocus focuses based on the light entering the camera rather than the image captured. So it's a lot faster and you don't get that flicker effect because it doesn't have to hunt back and forth for focus. All right, where this trail is, is becoming a bit of a mystery. I think this is my best option. Focus, it's killing it. Honestly, the change was obvious from the moment that I started shooting with this camera and it's night and day compared to the original S5. Another feature I noticed almost immediately after shooting on this camera was the in-body stabilization. And the stabilization was good on the first S5, but it's even better now. This thing is on rails. They've added active image stabilization, which is more effective, especially if you're walking with the camera. Honestly, on the previous S5, I would turn the stabilization off whenever I was walking with the camera or moving it in any unpredictable way. Whereas now I feel a lot more confident just leaving it on. As for specs, the S5 Mark II now records in 6K resolution, full frame, no crop. And it also records in higher frame rates. You can record up to 120 frames a second in full HD, also full frame without a crop. I've been shooting in 6K open gate, which is cool for a couple reasons. A, 6K, lots of detail, very sharp, crispy, you can punch in, reframe, great. But since I'm also shooting in this open gate mode, I'm shooting in a three by two aspect ratio, so it's like 6,000 by 4,000 pixels, which means I have a lot of extra vertical resolution. So I can get one wide shot, and then in post, I can reframe it pretty dramatically to move it around vertically and change the composition. And I can also crop in to a vertical frame, like nine by 16, and lose a lot less resolution and a lot less detail than I would if I were shooting 16 by nine. They've also added unlimited recording length in every resolution and frame rate. And remember, there's also a cooling fan to make sure you can actually use those recording modes. What really stood out to me about the S5 and what's kept me using it so long over the last couple years is just the beautiful image. The footage looks so good, and that hasn't gone anywhere. You still get great color science, wide dynamic range, smooth highlight and shadow roll off, and great low light performance with the dual native ISO at 640 and 4000. Also, if you're not really into post-processing and color grading your footage, you can now record with a LUT already applied. So you get that incredible image without having to, you know, kind of pull it out of that log footage. Ever since the S5 came out two years ago, I've been describing it as a camera that punches above its weight, giving much more expensive cameras a good run for their money at a much lower price. For me, the only thing separating it from pricier options were a couple of fatal flaws. Slow autofocus and weak specs. You get this incredible image at a great price, but 
If you're dependent on either of those features, this probably isn't the way to go. But with this second version, they've addressed those flaws, completely fixing the autofocus, improving the specs, 6K, high frame rate recording, unlimited recording times, and a built-in fan to make sure you can actually use them, and even adding additional features like the improved stabilization. And just like the S5 when it launched, the Mark II is incredibly affordable considering what it's capable of. Choosing a camera is incredibly individual and subjective, but I can say with confidence that the S5 Mark II will be my main go-to camera this year, and that it's gonna be a lot easier for me to recommend it to others. One final thing I wanna mention is the Lumix S5 Mark II X, which is launching alongside the S5 Mark II and includes a couple of additional features for getting the best possible image out of the camera. The S5 Mark II X can record in ProRes, it can record onto an external SSD, and it can even record raw. That being said, thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. I'm incredibly excited for this camera. Hopefully you are too, but regardless, be sure to go down to the comments, let me know what you think, and also subscribe to Adorama TV for thousands of other videos just like this one, and I will see you in the next one.